Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's Black Ops 1 Zombies Reimagined video is going to be about weapon changes to existing weapons in the game. So um, before we start that off, I want to go over some updates from the previous video. So a couple of you guys left comments. Um, one of them being that the PSG1 reload was not right. It wasn't adding the ammo into the clip at the correct time, so that has been fixed. Um, I'm not going to show off these small changes because they're so minor, but it is fixed. And also the muzzle flash on the new weapons wasn't correct on the upgraded versions. The upgraded muzzle flash is supposed to be more of like a red color, so that has been fixed too. So yeah, now we can get back into the video. So there's actually one more new weapon I want to show you guys. It's not really a weapon, but um, if you can see in the bottom right hand corner, there's now Molotovs. These are only on the classic maps, and they do damage directly on impact. You know, just like the World at War Molotovs. I believe the ones in World at War did damage over time after you had thrown it, but these ones don't. They just do damage on impact, and that's it. And they kill on, on any round, so that's cool. And um, the reason why the Molotovs have been added into the game, the main reason, is because... I've removed the monkey bombs from Verukt, uh, Noct, Verukt, and Shinonuma. I'm trying to make the classic classic maps have more of that, the, the World at War feel, so... The World at War versions of these maps didn't have the, the monkey bombs, they had Molotovs instead, so... I'm also going to do that with the Black Ops 1 versions of them, so... Um, Doris still has monkey bombs and it also has molotovs now so you can switch out your special grenades at any time. So yeah, I thought that was a cool addition. Pretty awesome. Alright, now before we get into the existing weapon changes, I want to show you guys something I've changed which... or something I've added which you can obviously see on the HUD. I now added the character names next to their points on the HUD. So yeah, I know this doesn't pertain to the video, but obviously you guys are going to see it, so I just wanted to mention that. I'll probably go more in depth into it on a different video. So now when you get rid of all your weapons, you're given your current knife in your hand. Once you buy a weapon, the combat knife will go away. It's basically just a placeholder for instead of having nothing in your hand like what you normally have, which just doesn't look right, you actually... Are wielding your knife in your hand now it looks more like what it should and if I can get the Bowie knife here yes you can see that it'll replace it with the Bowie knife very nice it has running animations knifing animations dolphin diving it is basically there's already a single-player version of all the animations so all I had to redo is replace the knife model is actually very easy it turns out looking pretty good in my opinion so I will also show what the sickle looks like all right one major change I want to go over um, it's gonna be kind of hard to explain it but basically all bullet weapons besides shotgun type weapons now do the same amount of damage through multiple zombies. In the normal version of BO1, and actually any version of zombies, the bullets actually lose a little bit of damage if they go through like thin walls like this right here, or zombies themselves. They would normally lose a little bit of damage, but now I made it so that all weapons keep their full damage when going through multiple zombies. See, I just killed all four of those in one shot. Or three, my bad. That would have easily taken at least one or two shots more for the zombies behind them. So, hitting multiple zombies at the same time, like let's say you got a full horde and you're shooting them with a bullet weapon, it's it's gonna feel like your gun's much more powerful, but it's, it's really not more powerful. Well, I guess it is more powerful for the, bull, the, the zombies getting hit from bullets going through multiple zombies, but really the damage itself is the same the damage hasn't been increased so I think that's a good change obviously it hasn't changed for shotguns because they lose their damage over range so it's kind of hard to encode that along with that so I just left shotguns the way they are 
So yeah, it also works for going through thin walls like this. So it'll keep its full damage now. This works for all bullet weapons of all types. Assault rifles, SMGs, light machine guns, sniper rifles, all of them. One change I made to upgraded wall weapons is that their ammo now only costs 2,500 instead of 4,500 before. So the reasoning behind that is because the unupgraded weapons cost half of the normal amount. So now the upgraded ammo costs half of what it costs to pack a punch it, which would be 2,500, half of 5,000. So yeah, to me, I've always felt that upgraded weapon ammo was always overpriced. 4,500, that just seems a little steep. So maybe now more people will pack punch wall weapons and actually use them in the lower rounds. So yeah. All right, here we go. There's one more change to sniper scopes. So I know I showed this in a previous video that sniper scopes no longer have any idle sway. But in the last video, I was unsure of how to remove the text on the top that said hold F to steady scope, but I finally have that removed now. So all weapons with a sniper type scope all have no idle sway, which is pretty nice. Feels very nice to use snipers now. All right, I'll show you guys the change I made to the claymores. They now have a placing sound. Same as with Bouncing Bettys and Spike Mords, which both have a placing sound, now the Claymores also do. So yeah, that's cool. Alright, the Bouncing Bettys, one new change for them. You can now pick them up. How cool is that, man? Pretty dope. And they also explode one second faster after being placed. Usually it takes two seconds, now it only takes one. Boom. Also another thing with all placeable mines, each player can only have a maximum of 20 places at a time now. This is to prevent the G-spawn error from happening. So it's still quite a lot you can place, it's not like Black Ops 3 where you can only place 2 at a time. So you still have 20 you can place which is quite a lot, but hopefully this should prevent the G-spawn error as well. Okay, the M72 Law 1 minor change. The weapon will start to automatically reload 50% faster after shot shooting now, so let's test that out. Doesn't look like much, but it's a little bit of an improvement. Alright, same change with the China Lake as the M72 Law. It'll start to talk the bullet faster after just firing, and it will also start to reload faster as well. So, some big changes to the China Lake. It's been buffed quite a bit. Also, as you can tell, you don't have to be scoped in to shoot anymore with the unupgraded version. Same thing with the M72 law. And also the explosion damage you take from it no longer gives you that weird shell shock effect. The Actually the only weapons that still give you that are the grenades. Every single other weapon besides grenades and I'm only talking about primary grenades so even like monkey bombs and matryoshka dolls and also the crossbow, china lake um, any weapon that would give you shell shock before has been removed. So yeah, quite a nice quality of life improvement. The only reason, or the main reason I kept it on the primary grenades was for first room challenges. I'm not trying to make those any easier. So I left the shell shock on there for first rooms mainly. And as you can see with the crossbow, no longer gives you the shell shock effect from the explosion. All right, and a new change for all explosive weapons, and I'm talking about only weapons, not equipment like grenades and claymores. Um, previously, if you don't know, all explosive weapons, um, they all increase damage over rounds, and weapons that are projectiles, which would be the Mustang and Sally and the M72 Law, Basically, the weapons that don't give you the shell shock effect, those weapons get a lot more damage increasing through rounds. Whereas grenades and other explosive weapons don't get too much extra damage, but I mean, the Mustang and Sally pretty much relies on the round number to get its damage, which means that the amount of damage that you do with the Mustang and Sally in No Man's Land has been changed quite a bit. It'll one-shot kill for quite a lot longer now. It'll one-shot kill for like about 20 waves now. 
but then once it does start to decrease in damage where it's not a one shot kill it'll start becoming like two and then three and then four shot kills really fast it'll start because the zombies get exponentially more health whereas the bullet damage will be staying the same with this new damage so I, I don't know how I feel about it right now. It, it feels like it's changed No Man's Land a lot. See, I can still one-shot insanely easy without even trying right there. Which, I'm, I'm not an avid No Man's Land player, but I'm almost sure that it should be more than one shot by now on the normal No Man's Land. So I'm, I'm going to see what I can do about that. I don't want to add the damage scaling back to the Mustang and Sally. I want to keep it at a constant damage. I don't think that any actual weapon damage should scale damage over rounds. It kind of makes sense for equipment in my opinion but not for weapons so I'm keeping the equipment doing uh, scaling damage but any weapon is not going to scale damage anymore. 